question about the nurses one time. All right, guys. Uh, sorry about the wait. So sorry you've got Colin. Uh, a <laughs> little bit concerned about the hole on the side of your boat. Now, uh, before we do get going, I'd like to run everyone through arguably the most exciting part of the tour, which is, of course, health and safety. First things first, around the edges of the boat, you're going to notice that it's a blue ribbon. Please do keep everything that you would like to return with inside of this blue ribbon, and that does include any limbs you are especially fond of. Next thing I'd like to say is in regards to your hard hat. Please do keep your hard hats on while we are on the boat. Once we get to the cabin, take them off there. Like. Not being a hypocrite here, I am wearing one. Mine is just a little bit more stylish. Perfect for the job. <laughs> and last but not least, is anybody on this boat claustrophobic or scared of the dark? No? Well, we are about to find out. <laughs> Please do mind your head. The first part of the tour is the low town. Okay guys, now what we are all currently floating down is an 18th century lifeline. This lifeline was opened from 1771 and it shut down in 1791. And you might notice that's only about 20 years. 20 years is quite a short lifespan for a man. And the reason this place shut down so soon is for the simple fact as it was man of the day. However, please remember this was back in the 18th century. In today's cash, that loss of £10,000 would be equivalent to one of almost two and a half million. And that does explain the ticket prices upstairs. They are still trying to make this money back. Now, we're only seven years old, he was coming down here and he was working not only six days a week, but also 14 hours each day. I'm sure we can all agree that's quite a lot of work for anybody to be doing, never mind someone so young. And for doing all of that, he would have got paid about two pence a week, which is about the same that we're on the AI speed we're having now. <laughs> Just on your left hand side, while winter vein is coming up. Now, just in case there's anybody on this boat who is around the age of seven, or anybody on this boat who knows anyone around the age of seven, I'd like to introduce to you all Speedwell Cabin's new apprenticeship scheme. <laughs> okay. Now the next place coming up is a place known as the Halfway House. It's called the Halfway House because the miners, they named it after their favourite pub, which was called the Halfway House Inn. Now the miners, they would have gone to this pub every day after work, and they would have gotten very, very drunk. Now not only would they have gotten drunk at this pub, but what they would have done is they would have brought alcohol. They would have brought it by the barrel pub. They then would have brought these big 
barrels of alcohol down the mine, stored them inside the halfway house, the one in the tunnel, and they did that so they could get drunk while they were working. Now, aside from being alcoholics and miners, they did have quite a good reason to just a landlord of the pub. <laughs> now, to this day, we still do use the halfway house. However, this purpose is slightly different. Just in front of us, you're going to notice there is another boat coming down the tunnel. This boat is heading directly towards us, and you're going to notice this tunnel not exactly very wide. Are you guys seeing a little bit of a problem here? Yeah, so that means we have two options. Option number one, we can carry on going um, straight down the tunnel. We can crash directly into the other boat and hope that they sink before we do. Or we could go for option number two, we could pull inside the halfway house, use it as a little bit of a lay-by and let the other boat peacefully pass us by. Now usually I would leave this up to a boat but I would like to give you all a bit of a warning. I have no idea how long the other boat has been down here for. Could be an hour, day, week, month, even a year, or like it. is, everybody on the other boat is most likely going to be completely insane. They're going to be very feral, very hungry, so please do keep your heads down, avoid bacon, direct contact, and hopefully they will leave us alone. However, if they do board our boat, it's going to have to be everyone for themselves. Now while we are inside the halfway house, you're going to notice it's very cramped inside of here. You're going to notice it is quite damp, very dingy, nearest to the last thing you question about the nurses one time. Sorry guys, I'll sorry about the wait. So sorry you've got Colin. A little bit concerned about the hole on the side of your boat. around it, you guys reach out, give it a touch, just come up on both sides, may feel a little bit warmer when they wrap around it, may feel a little bit more slimy on the bed when they wrap around it. It might even smell a bit different. Now the reason for all the differences and the reason why I actually did not touch that wall is because what most of you touch so willingly and so enthusiastically. Seriously guys, not even a single question asked. That was the foundation of the gents toilets. <laughs> Feel free to wipe your hand on the person sat next to you. Don't worry guys, I am of course only joking. I could never be so cruel. What that actually was, it was the second vein of lead that the miners did find out here. Now that vein of lead was known as the long cliff vein. It's called the long cliff vein quite simply because it went 120 meters up to the surface, where it did come out of a place called the long cliff hill. As you can tell, the miners are not very creative people. Well, it's going 120 meters up to the surface, 
also went eight meters on each side. Now you guys are not going to worry, the sheep it was just fine. Personally, it was so fine, I'd probably even call it delicious. safety hold to miners, yeah. they were given just two days. Two days of unpaid work. To put into perspective, they had had about two months to make the halfway house. Now reluctantly the miners, they agreed and they got to work. And the safety hold that they made for these two days that had to be six people is coming up on your left. When we go past it, I want you all to tell me whether you think six people can fit inside of it. Try to imagine six people inside of that. What do you guys reckon? Could six people fit inside of that? No. There's no way. At least you can get about two or three people. We used to have mannequins inside of there to represent this. These mannequins made out of body plastic, dressed up as miners. The reason we don't have them anymore is because they had a habit of falling into the water, looking very creepy. The breaking point is one day they came down to the tour full of about 28 year olds, and that's 20 individual 8 year olds, not 28 year olds. Just after I'd finished telling them about how little Winster had worked and died down here, I turned around, reached into the water, and pulled out the mannequin of a seven year old boy. As you can imagine all children has the light. On your left hand side there, that's a place known as the Poor Man's Bay. That was the smallest vein of lead that the miners did find down here. However, eventually the miners they did begin to use that as a safety hold instead, because it was still quite considerably bigger than the previous safety hold they have done. You can get to places such as Peak Cabin. Now, Peak Cabin is normally about a 10 minute walk down the road. However, if you wanted to avoid paying ticket prices, you could get to Peak Cabin through there. It would only take you about a six hour walk. So I'm pretty sure at this point it's probably worth it. The second place I'd like to ask you all to keep an eye out for is uh, just on your left hand side when you get out of the boat. Behind the railing, you'll notice a massive body of water. This is known as the bottomless pit. I'm going to tell you all about the bottomless pit on the way back, because if I told you about it now on the way back, I would have nothing to talk about, and we would just be sat there in awkward silence. Please do brace yourselves when we do get to the cabin. There might be a lot of a bump. Some people like to refer to this as crashing. However, I'm going to ask you all instead um, to call it improvised parking. I will tell you when it is safe to get off the boat. Your emergency exits are on your left and your right. Brace yourselves. I mean it guys, really do brace yourselves.
Okay. Now while we are on the way back, I am gonna start is an amazing an outstanding an absolutely mind boggling jaw dropping breath taking an incredible eleven thousand Thank <laughs> you. 